Hi, my name's Adam. Welcome to part 4 of my video series on creating a flight controller using X-Plane and LabVIEW. In the last video, we experimented with a basic proportional pitch controller, and we examined how the system response changed with different gains by manually adjusting our pitch set point to approximate a step or a ramp or whatever. What if we want to produce consistent, repeatable inputs so that we have reliable data for comparison or analysis? Today we're going to look at implementing a basic function generator so we can do just that. Let's get to it. Okay, so here we are back with the setup from where we left off in the last video. I've tidied the diagram up a bit, moved some controls around, but otherwise it should be functionally the same. And we've still got our, our manual pitch set point control. So I can move it around, do whatever I want, and, and the aircraft follows but my inputs aren't very precise and they're not very repeatable. So if I want to see what the aircraft does in response to a step edge, I can't really generate a step. I can generate something close, but it's not really right and I certainly can't repeat it reliably. So let's, let's see what we can do about that. Okay, so at the moment our pitch comes from our pitch set point slider over here. Just going to move that over a bit. And we're going to insert this function generator VI which I've made and which I'll show you in a moment. So the output of that is going to go, just become our new input, our new set point input. And then on this side we have three inputs. We have a, a selector for choosing what we would like our source of the set point to be. We have an input for a manual set point, so that's our, our original pitch slider. And then we have three signal parameters that control our generated waveforms if we're going to use an automatic waveform of some sort. Okay, and that created some controls for us that we need to put somewhere. So I'll grab those for the moment. We'll just put them over here. Probably observing by now that I meet all the stereotypes of why engineers shouldn't be allowed to design user interfaces. Um, but it's functional. That's all I care about. Okay, so before we start this, let's open up that function generator and just see what it is. It's quite simple. So we have the radio buttons up here, which select between four different sources. And then that feeds into this case structure. And so depending on what we select on our radio buttons, that feeds in here. And you can see, basically I've got four different inputs here. Three function generators plus our manual input. And as we go through the different cases, it just pipes a different one to the output. So it's, it's pretty simple. These are square wave, triangle wave, and sine wave generators just built into to LabVIEW. And at the moment we're feeding them um, three parameters from the signal parameters cluster, which is a, a frequency, an amplitude, and an offset. And then we also feed in this cluster down here, which I can't recall the details of right now, but it's basically the number of samples that we want the, the generator to return. So in this case, we only need a single sample at each, at each loop update. And this is old and unused and shouldn't be here anymore. Okay, that's how that works. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, the waveform generators here are doing most of the magic. Close that down. Let's run this now and see what it allows us to do. 
So by default, we're still in manual set point mode and everything operates exactly as it did before. So that's we haven't we haven't broken anything. That's a good start. Now if we want to use any of these, we need to put in some some of these parameters here. Um, so we'll start with that. And let's start off with a sine wave. And so what you can see is that the the system is now feeding a sine wave into the into the set point of the control loop and the aircraft is trying to track that that sine wave and you know it's not doing it perfectly there's there's some error there and if we were to change our gain to be a bit less we can see that 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 error increases so triangle wave is a very similar story um, and then we've got our square wave which a lot of the time is the one that's most interesting to us because it's our it's our worst case input and so it will reveal any any nasty behaviors that the system might have So you can see quite repeatedly here what the how the system ramps towards its set value and then what its steady state error is once it gets close. I might just slow that down a bit more and increase the amplitude a bit so we can see what's going on a bit better. So this is really nice, we don't have to do anything, we can just sit here and watch it and particularly once we've got a few more gains that we're trying to adjust, we can just concentrate on adjusting the gains and all the, the set points is taken care of for us. So that's, that's pretty good. So the other, the other parameter we have down here is offset and so that's just an offset from zero for the wave. So it's a, it's a DC offset. So for example, if we wanted uh, an amplitude of five, but we wanted that around minus 10. So we can check our behavior around, around a given offset value, uh, which, which might reveal different behavior to us. And then we can return back to manual and it still behaves exactly as it did before. So it's all good. I hope you enjoyed this video. In the next video, we'll add an airspeed control loop to further improve the controllability and repeatability of our control system testing and tuning. If you have any questions, comments or feedback, please post in the comment section below. If you found this video interesting or informative and would like to see more videos like it in the future, please like and subscribe.